<laughs> right? We had finished this. Yeah. Okay. I'm the next one. I'm the next one. And the next one. Okay. Safeguard you. Right? So. Ah, it's policy issues we are looking at now. By the way, right? So safeguarding is what is is it the first one under policy issues? I'm just looking at. It. It's, it's, it's a really good book on ethics, by the way. Yeah, uh, the other author is. Uh, not beans. <laughs> this, this is what I have on my uh, PowerPoint. <laughs> I know, I didn't notice what you're going to do. <laughs> right, okay. Now, NSPCC uh, state that the action that is taken to promote the welfare of children and protect them from harm is the definition of safeguarding. That's their definition, right? It defines safeguarding as the action that is taken to promote the welfare of children and protect them from harm. So what we're saying here is safeguarding on paper is not safeguarding. It's only safeguarding when action is taken. That's according to this. So the key word, one of the key words there is action. Okay. Now, what are we safeguarding children from? I'm not saying this list is by any means exhaustive, uh, but we are basically safeguarding children from abuse and maltreatment. Now, what's the difference between abuse and maltreatment? What, are the, what is the difference? You mean physical abuse or verbal abuse? All forms of abuse. All forms of abuse. Yeah. Mal maltreatment has to do with food. Is that malnutrition? Ill treating children, yeah, it could be that. But can you not say maltreatment is abuse and abuse is maltreatment? When is maltreatment not abuse? Is it, is it one of those things that crosses over and you can't have one without the other? You, you can't, it's, it's not defined by law as abuse, but still that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, we're also safeguarding children from harm to children's uh, to, to their health or development. So it's not just health, but their development. Anything that's done to children that hinders or impedes on their development uh, needs to be addressed. We need to safeguard children from that. Uh, ensuring, ensuring children grow up with the provision of safe and effective care is also part of safeguarding. So it may be, it doesn't matter where it is, it could be in health, education, or care. Children must grow up safe, right? So with the provision, there must be a provision of safe and effective care. Uh, there's a philosopher called Mel Noddings have you heard of her? Nail no. Noddings. Okay. Uh, she says uh, the primary role of schools is to care for our children. Do you agree with her? Is it caring or Educating. Well, what's more important than the other? Well, the care comes care and safety. Right? So caring, okay? So when a child is going into a school, are they thinking they're going into an environment where they're going to learn, or are they thinking they're going into an environment where they're safe? Safe. So safety is at the forefront, okay? So even in education, children must feel safe. Then taking action to enable all children, young people, to have the best outcomes 
So you want to stretch children. You want every child to have equal, an equal opportunity to the best outcomes. So you're not just looking at what is happening now, you're looking at what is the end result of what we are doing with children. Earliest foundation stage. All right? Um, NDS providers must ensure that their provision meets the learning and development requirements as specified in the NDS foundation stage. You know that document, the EYFS? Mm -hmm. Yeah? And these are called learning and development requirements. You're still citing the same source. Okay? So it's still the same author. And then we move on to the next. Slide, okay, now we're fast enough. Yeah, go fast if you want. <laughs> <laughs> right, are there any questions before we move on to the next slide? Yeah. Right, let's look at the EYFS in detail. Now, this is according to Milstone Day Nestle. They've come up with this equation. You know, we have four principles. Are they called principles under the EYFS? Yeah. Yeah, so you have four principles. A unique child, positive relationships, enabling environments, learning and development. Those are the. That's why I was looking at why. Yeah, they made it up. They made it up. It's because they put it as an equation. They make it there. Yeah. 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 Yes, they've formulated it as an equation. Okay, because in the document, it's not formulated as an equation. That's why I've sourced. Uh, I've referenced them. Okay? So they're saying unique child plus positive relationships plus envi uh, enabling environments equals learning and development. In other words, they are saying learning and development does not happen in the absence of these three. Which is basically what EYFS is learning. Yeah. So it's their interpretation. Okay. <laughs> 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 So you want to acknowledge the uniqueness of every child, first and foremost. You want to understand them, what, their, what are their needs? What are their interests, okay? What are they good at? Remember the analogy of a fish I gave you earlier on, right? Do not give children what they are unable to do, otherwise they experience failure. And when they experience failure, they won't be confident. So you want to understand what it is they are good at, and you want to develop them, and what they are not so good at, you want to encourage them, at least give them opportunities to succeed. Right? So every child is unique, is, is, is a unique child who is constantly learning and can be resilient, capable, confident, and self-assured. Now, where it says can be, right, what it suggests is the environment must be right for that to happen, right? It's not always going to be the case, but if you create the environment that is conducive to a child uh, developing, to, to a child becoming resilient, to a child becoming capable, to a child being confident, and to a child being self-assured, if the environment is right, they will be, all right? Many of the positive relationships, children learn to be strong and independent through positive relationships, right? These relationships must be fostered, fostered in the setting, but the best way to do it is make sure that what is happening in the setting is followed up at home. You know, that gap between home and setting sometimes can be a problem. Because if a child is experiencing something else at home and only having the positive aspects in the setting, there's no continuity. So there's need for professionals, practitioners to work with parents, am I right? Yeah. yeah? Uh, then you have enabling environment. Children learn and develop well in enabling environments in which their experiences respond to their individual needs. Again, it's going back to the unique child when you talk about individual needs, all right? And there is a strong partnership between practitioners and parents and carers. That, that's what I've been trying to say. That partnership is very important for continuity and consistency. But children love consistency. You don't want to be doing one thing in the setting and then they experience another thing at home. Uh, children develop and learn in different ways. 
again, it's understanding what ways these children learn in. Um, the framework covers education and care and so on and so forth, right? Um, including children with special educational needs and disabilities. All that has to be taken uh, into consideration. All right? Every Child Matters, 2003. And then it's contained in Children Act, 2004. Okay, now this came from um, Trinity, Trinity Youth Association 2019. Okay, uh, issues to do with the health of the child, uh, the child's safety, and then enjoyment and achievement, and then uh, achievement of economic well being and making positive contribution to society. Now, when you are writing your journal article, you need, it's up to you to figure out how you want to apply these. I'm not saying you write about everything that's in this presentation. You select, again, that ability to select will end your marks because you have actually engaged with the literature and made a conscious decision or made a conscious choice of what you want to go. By depending on its applicability to what you're writing about. Are there any questions about this here? Yes. No. No. Okay. Right. Quality and diversity is another policy issue. Right. Uh, equal participation. When we say equal participation, is it the same as the same participation? What's the difference between equal and same? What's the difference? Um, yeah, the quality of the fox is the same. Uh, no, e equality, you get the boxes that you need, and then well, the other version the same. The same. is when you get, and they all get the same box. So you divide the same boxes between everyone okay. to stand on, or if you need equal, everyone gets what they need to achieve the same goals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Colleen, you're saying? I said the same. Same. Okay. In a different way. Yeah. So equality is about what the child needs. The same is not interested in what children need, rather, it's interested in has everyone got the same treatment regardless of what they need. Okay? If we say all children use the stairs, regardless of whether or not they need the lift, then we say we have treated all children the same, but unequally, because some children will need the lift. Okay? Um, so it's got to do with equal treatment, equal access to support, so children get the support they need. That's why I think we have issues when it comes to mental health, because children with mental health issues are not getting the support they need. First, uh, practitioners are not trained in the support of children with mental health, right? And then second, those who need specialist support do not access that support in good time. Some people wait for 18 months, 24 months, before they can get specialist support. What is happening in the interim is the child is suffering, okay? and their situation can actually become worse. Many of uh, non-discriminatory practices, regardless of what child you're dealing with, you have to treat them equally. Do not discriminate on any grounds. And you also need to respect that no two children are the same. This is actually lining up with uh, the EYFS, when you talked about unique child. Okay, okay to move on? Mm -hmm. And the voice of the child, right? Children must be involved in key decisions affecting their lives. It's in Children Act 1989, also enshrined in the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child 1989. Uh, linked to that, we have child participation. If they understand what, you, uh, what is happening, 
if they are of an age or at an age where or a stage where they understand what's happening or what decisions they're making, involve them in any decisions that have to do with them, right? Go beyond being heard. It's not enough to say, oh, we've given children a chance to speak and then go on and not do anything, right? We're talking about, uh, what's the name, Greta, what's the seven? The, the environmentalist. Yeah. Uh, we, we talked about Greta, and yes, she got the platform at the United Nations. Okay. Being here is not enough. If people are not going to take action, what's the point of asking children to participate? You consult them and then go on and do what you planned all along, ignoring what children have said, then there's no point in involving them. We are not saying you're going to do everything the child says to do, but at least show that you are taking uh, into account what they've said. Right, prevent duty. What's your understanding of prevent duty? Yeah. Now, the government, uh, .gov .uk website on prevent uh, states that protecting children from the risk of radicalization should be seen as part of schools and childcare providers' wider wide safeguarding duties and is similar in nature to protecting children from other, other harms like drugs and so on and so forth, okay? So what they're encouraging is, we are not introducing a, a new burden for, for providers, for practitioners. It's the same thing we've been doing, only that we are paying particular attention to this particular issue of radicalization. Why? Because it is a problem and it puts children at risk. Uh, not all children, but some children at risk, right? So we want to prevent people from being drawn into terrorism. When you're talking about children, particularly, <coughs> we're saying, right, let's prevent children from uh, being drawn into terrorism. You remember the case of that girl who went to Syria and gave birth and wanted to come back? Yeah. And then she lost. She made her baby. Yeah. They just like walk back in. No consequences, did they? Or was that yeah. somebody else? No, that's her. I guess. I thought they just let her back in, no consequences or anything. Surely not. Going into oh, yeah. protection. Yeah. They were trying to stop her, weren't they? They were saying she had dual nationality, so she was to go to the other country. They didn't stop for a while, so that's why they were not doing that. Died, that's right, yeah. Yeah, why didn't they do that? Well, they wasn't getting the aid and the support. But they've all died, haven't they? Yeah. yeah. Now, that, that case puts to taste uh, our claim that we use, uh, you know, the youth justice system, we use what is known as the welfare approach, where you say, okay, even if the child is committing a crime, their welfare is still very important. Now, when these kids left the UK for Syria, they were children, weren't they? Yeah. Okay. Now, the principle of, uh, the, the welfare principle says, children are children first before they're criminals. That's the principle. But, but it poses a risk to, the, to a lot of other people, doesn't it? Yeah. That decision. So that demonstrates the limitations of the principle, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Yeah. It's like um, in the Bowger case. Remember James Bowger? Yeah? How far are you prepared to take this welfare principle? Did they be offended? One. Yeah. One way offended. Yeah, but he got, he went back Now, are we, okay, so which construction of children are we going with there? Are we constructing them as innocent? No. Or constructing them as evil? Yeah, yeah. That's like, that's not just like a petty crime. That was, that was evil. Yeah, that was torturing. 
hideousness. I mean, that's yeah. just not human. The extent of planning. That's not that's an innocent child. child. That's a ten-year-old child yeah. knowing, knowingly doing that to mm -hmm. an innocent. It's just that's beyond the realms. Of, I can't comprehend that at all. No. That really bothers me. Actually, yeah. even that many years after, it's yeah. still incomprehensible. Mm. One of them has, has sort of seemed to rear belly in the case of his life, hasn't it? Yeah, just gone away and. Yeah. Not good at all, but. So he wasn't the main one, right? No, it wasn't. I he think wasn't. He, he, was, he wasn't the innocent, but he was more innocent than he He just can't wait. Yeah. He was a shoe driver. Yeah, yeah. And, like, to have due regard to the need to prevent people from, okay, children in our case, uh, being drawn into terrorism, staff must be able to identify children who may be vulnerable to radicalization. Can you see how much responsibility rests on the shoulders of people working with children and young people? Yeah. Yeah? You have the mental health side, you want to deal with that. There's a whole host of things that you are expected to be aware of and you are expected to be competent enough to handle in your in your day-to-day -day, uh, dealings with children. Do you think you're paid enough in the sector? No. No, no. We're not paid enough. It doesn't reflect not, the amount of responsibility, no, no. does it? But money wouldn't, wouldn't say, okay, radicalise this group of people because, you know, I'm not being paid enough. I'm not being paid enough, yeah. But what I'm saying is, can you see how much responsibility is on the shoulders of people with children? Yeah. Um, the schools and everything. Do you get training on this? Because you're supposed to. Yeah. 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 yeah? Schools and early years providers must assess the risk of children being drawn into terrorism. So there must be some mechanism of risk assessment. What risk assessment do you carry out? Just science. Just science. Just the history. They've moved around a lot from school to school and where they come from originally and any links they know parents have. Yeah. So know it as well. I think the the biggest challenge that we have when it comes to identifying some of these signs is you know, the use of social media. But these groups use social media a lot, right? You cannot monitor that 100% effectively, <coughs> can you? No. That, that's difficult. The internet is just posing a lot uh, of challenges uh, for, for practitioners and, and professionals working with children and young people. Um, and then there's this uh, point there, you must work in partnership with who? Well, the parents, like the authorities, yes. agencies. Yes. Like the police, singing, the records, and the Yes. Brilliant. Training, how often should you get the training? Yeah. Annually. Yeah. All right. Is it enough, annually? Uh, probably not, to be honest, the way it does it go. IT policies, what are we talking about there? Uh, e -safety. Yes, e-safety. Yeah. E Probably time as well, allocation. Yeah. And how do you build children's resilience? That's in keeping with the UIFS. How do you build children's resilience? Well, preparing them for the <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. If it happens, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or the signs yeah, like out you or yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Adoption. Mm -hmm. No. Right. Yes. Now, <laughs> almost there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> when we talk about. Sorry. <laughs> when we talk about adoption, okay. Uh, for you to be able to adopt, I'm not saying this is a rule, but these are the qualities that have been identified in literature, uh, qualities of a, a good uh, adopter or person who can adopt, right? They must be understanding, and they also must be accepting of uh, children from a range of backgrounds. They must also demonstrate patience, 
uh, in the sense of humor. Why is the sense of humor important? Uh, I think what together is Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Energy and commitment to do what? Commitment to do what? Be there and, and support your parents. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Now, adoption in relation to the child, the child must be, obviously, if the child is under the age of 18, right? Uh, when the adoption application is made. And the child must not be or have never been married or in a civil partnership. So even if the child is below the age of 18, if they've been married before, or you know, in some cultures children get married early, then they are not eligible for adoption, right? Eligible rather, for adoption. I left the E. Okay. Um, is that a good or bad thing? Why, why should that be the case. If they're married? Yeah. Because if they're married, they're actually the responsibility of their partner? Or no, if, they, if they've been married and they divorced, oh. like child brides, oh. why can they not be adopted? I don't know. Oh, right. yeah. Did you have to start taking on the other family? The problems that may have come from them? They're going to be happy. Yeah, but that's the whole thing. That's the whole idea. I mean, yeah. You know, well, trying to help work out. Because when they get married, they're taking on an adult role. Yeah, in a sense, they are. Are they losing their childhood? Or so you're not dealing with a child as the, such? Exactly. That, that's where the definition of child. Yeah. Um, Fine line. Yeah, the definition of defining a child solely by their age is limited. Right? Yeah. Because some children may have developed so beyond so their age. age isn't it, in yeah. that case. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, the child's birth parents uh, normally have to agree to the adoption um, unless they cannot be found or they're incapable of giving consent uh, or the child would be put at risk if they were not adopted. So there are exceptions to uh, the rule of parental consent, right? Uh, who can adopt? Um, single, married, civil partnership, married couple, partner child, parent, different rules of private adoption and adoptions of looked after children. That's a different rule altogether. But uh, the top this section here is generic section, and this is just highlighting the fact that if the children um, being involved in private ad adoptions or adoption of looked after children, um, then different rules will apply. Right, children in care looked after children, they are considered the most vulnerable members of society and therefore local authorities must help or must take responsibility as well to, sh to ensure that these children are protected. Um, because children are being looked after by effectively the local authorities known as corporate parenting, i.e. it is collective, it's being done in conjunction with, okay, so it's, it's that cooperation. And the responsibility is to make sure the best possible care is provided for these children. All right? And then we have children in the youth justice system. Uh, we've talked about the welfare of the child, the welfare approach, right? Again, serving children's best interests. So what is it that is in the best interests of the child when you are looking after children who are in the youth justice system? Remember, these children have committed crimes. Let's not forget that but it doesn't mean that they forfeit their rights, okay? They still need to be particip uh, participating in why 
find the social uh, agenda. You also need to build on their strengths so that when they get out of these institutions, they can be useful or profitably employed. And then promote a childhood removed from the justice system, i.e. make sure that children don't carry on uh, committing crime. Okay? Right? So this is the journey we've traveled. Okay. Key terms, political issues, ideological issues, policy issues. Are there any questions? Right. Further reading. All these documents are in today's lesson folder. Make sure you familiarize with and try and interrogate the readings. Uh, have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.